Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome along to another Tuesday night Twitch out thing. It can mean only one thing. That's right, it's ACC Season 2, done one hub style. I'm John Wright, also known as, of course, Double O Raven, and it's my great pleasure once again to be welcoming a me alongside me, sorry, in the commentary box this evening. It's Christian Romano, ERS's Chromadix himself. Good evening, Christian. Good evening, uh, uh, good evening to everyone, uh, and uh, I hope to uh, to have a look at one of the greatest British tracks around uh, around England, the Prince Hatch. Yep, it really is. It really is an absolutely phenomenal track that we have for you this evening. Of course, Brands Hatch 5.8 kilometers long, 3.6 miles for you old schoolers, much like myself. A very short and winding track. Eight corners lap record ah oh, wow how has that happened <laughs> uh, let's very quickly shuffle on to the results from last week Dex Dexter eagle eyed as ever thank you for saving my pluses there Ah, we really need to change the name of them from Britain. Uh, it's Brands Hatch, that was Silverstone. I am a complete donut. These are the official results from last week. Mix 64. Uh, he took top honours for Group X. And it was the mighty Eggy took top honours for Group Z. Milden and Cool, the SOP pair, uh, pair fended off Carmentalist. Um, to deny him from the podium, first time this season that's happened. Will it be the last? Who knows? Some stiff, stiff competition. And it was APX Rogue and Eddie that rounded out the podium for Group Z. Flying Throne got himself a comeback point along with the mighty Iggy. Yuri B, unsurprisingly, yet again this season found himself taking pole position in qualifying and driver of the day was flying from. That gives us standings which look very much like this. As you can see, Mix64, ERT's Milden. Sorry, yeah, again, right, okay, so uh, Milden's actually switched to ERT, so it's no longer the SOP pairing. So Milden has actually switched uh, to ERT now. So apologies, Milden, and the ERT team. <laughs> uh, it is ERT Milden uh, in second, uh, as you can see, for Group X Cool uh, in third. It was the first race after the split. That was round number four. And it's Mighty Iggy, APX, Rogue, and Eddie leading the way. Carrado Cablo close in behind Jason. You having a giggle. Uh, Leon Seeley didn't score any points. Yuri B finished down in 8th after a quite startling uh, takeoff to the season. Uh, we also have some other standings to look at as well. Uh, the drivers were all randomly paired. Uh, top split and but uh, said why? Said next. Uh, the two splits uh, they were paired randomly and it's buzzing hornets that are leading the way. That's SOP Cool and the mighty Iggy. Uh, the two of them on the podium, as you can see there. Kinder Bueno, that's Mix 64, of course, won his race. And Carrado finishing just outside the podium on fourth, but still enough to see the Bueno boys second in the team standings. And it is Heartbeat. Why do you miss... I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. Uh, team Heartbeat is Floppy and Rogue. Um, they found themselves there or thereabouts, um, accumulating enough points to find themselves all square with the golden old days. That is Frome and Eddie, who are both half my age, so thanks for that. Returning champion, Carmentalist, finds himself fifth in the team championship, um, denied the podium, as I say, for the first time this season. His teammate, you having a giggle. Gifting enough points there to put them one point ahead of Hubba Bubba. Uh, APR Racing in 7th. In 8th we have Crunchy. In 9th we have Milky Wasing. And in 10th it is Purple Sector. Yuri and Leon. 
Uh, of course, it is one hub, and this evening I don't have that loaded, and it won't while the broadcast is live, which is unfortunate. So I'm going to look a bit silly. Let's talk about the what the drivers have up for grabs, and then we'll talk about the sponsors, and I'll maybe even let Chromadex sneak a word in before qualifying. How fabulous would that be for him? Uh, although he's got some news of his own, and I absolutely cannot wait uh, to get shared with everyone. Uh, what you can see on screen, the Elite Racing Team, one of the partners. That's the Going Gets Tough Award uh, for completing all your media day bits and bobs. And if you finish outside the top three and attend every race, you get your name on a wheel. And you could win £25 a PlayStation or Amazon vouchers. The choice is yours. And in the Drivers' Championship, it is very much the same. The outright winner of both splits, Group X and Group Z. I keep getting those wrong. Uh, will have the same choice of Amazon or PlayStation voucher to the amount of £25, which is absolutely phenomenal. Speaking of sponsors and partners, that was, of course, ER Team. We were just talking about there. Vesper Team are also partners. Uh, the partnership with Vesper Team who support in championship prizes. 3M Sim Racing are sponsors, and they sponsor really by providing a pair of sim racing gloves and of course next level racing sponsor league by providing a dd stand to the driver who gets the most driver of the days in formula one of course the mental health foundation as well massive sponsors it's good to talk if you do find yourself needing any type of help at all please reach out to the mental health foundation website and uh, they have a plethora of options to help get you back up and running and on your way. Speaking of up and running, it is interesting from what I can see in the practice times to say the least. We've got about a minute and a half until the drivers take to the track to start setting some serious laps in qualification. So why don't we let Christian jump in? And say a proper hello to everyone, what he's looking forward to, what he makes of the stand-ins, didn't even ask him any opinions. Christian, what's going on inside your head? Oh, and before we do, can we just congratulate Christian, sorry. We'll have to say a massive congratulations. Uh, how old are you again, Christian, remind me, sorry? Hmm? How, how old are you? Uh, 18. 18. He's at university. And he has just been accepted onto the young driver's path to become a Formula One engineer at his university. So he really is the absolute full package and I'm definitely destined for the greatest of great things. So from, yeah, me, everyone that knows you and everyone at OneHub, I'm sure. Congratulations on that one. And uh, now that your cheeks are beaming bright red, what is it Chris is looking forward to this evening and how do you see the standings? Uh, I can't, I hate you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, for, for everyone, yes, I'm a, I've been a separate into Formula student and yes, it's kind of the path to becoming a Formula One engineer, but that's a long path. So <laughs> it is a long path for your I just capable, started. Definitely uh, more than capable. But, <laughs> okay, now that I'm completely embarrassed. Um, Excellent. yes. Brent Satcher. Um we are looking into uh never uh, never pause yourself track. Uh, basically there is no straight line. Uh, you are, you are always turning constantly. Um it's configuration, it's uh, pretty balanced between the right turns and left turns. Uh, it's uh, mostly clockwise, but as a, the second sector is completely anti-clockwise. So it differs uh, your driving style uh, from sector to sector, considering the first sector uh, is very technical. The second sector is a bit more uh, um, a bit more calm because it's basically a straight and two, uh, and two curves. The first sector is what makes your times because uh, you need to get all the right turns uh, uh, all perfectly uh, nailed into the apex, and uh, if you make a mistake, it is the grass to hug you and say, "Welcome to Brinsach. Your next stop is the box." <laughs> then, <laughs> then, uh, free practice was basically a Ferrari lockup, 
uh, apart from Alexus uh, that wanted to break this party. Um, and yes, it makes sense because the Ferrari is uh, pretty good in every track that has uh, um, uh, more turns than straight. Uh, it's very balanced in terms of uh, uh, you can keep more speed uh, while turning compared to any other car in the same conditions, mostly because it's very stable on the rear. And it doesn't have a very high top speed, but here it's literally useless to have top speed and you just have to turn, so it's completely perfect. Although the Lexus uh, will be a giant surprise in it, because the Lexus is great um, because of its uh, um, abilities in to turn in and braking. Uh, it's a bit understeery, but here it could even help the Lexus drivers, mostly because if you, if you are looking into a loser, uh, a loose rear type of setup, you can easily come up with a lot of downforce in the rear and therefore uh, balance the understeer part of your car uh, in, in, a good, in a good sense. Um, in terms of uh, pit stops, uh, probably it's going to be a dry race. Uh, most of the drivers, uh, even I think all of them, uh, some of them also prepared a wet setup, but Considering um, all, nearly all of the practice sessions were dry, most of the drivers just went full focus into a dry setup and just partially uh, prepared a panic setup for, for a wet surface. But most likely it will be, it will be completely dry and that's how you jinx a race. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, my friend. Love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, Dexter, no, um, I'm going to take that one on the chin. Sorry to interrupt, no, Dex, I'm absolutely going to take that one on the chin publicly on the stream. I read Britain made that assumption, and you know what assumption does, my friend? It makes it of you and me, and it certainly did there, so no, 100% on me. Uh, but yeah, we're, uh, we're on board with uh, perpetual pole position point taker and heartbreaker, I'm sure, as Yuri B in the Ferrari. Absolutely. So in that one round there, but yeah, sorry, Chrome. I interrupted your train of thought there, but you were talking, yeah, Brands. It's a tricky, tricky track, and it's going to looking like it's going to be dry. So the majority of them are going to be, are going to be looking at carry a dry setup, I would say. Yeah, yeah, it's what I was saying, but uh, I was just finishing to say that uh, you, you were talking about UDB, and that's what uh, I was talking about. Uh, he will probably do another fold. The other question is, uh, uh, can he finally hold it? because in the last races, every time he made a mistake, especially Monza. Monza, were, he, he was first with a very good chunk of advantage. And it's bad to say it, but he just threw it in the bin. And he, I mean, Brent Sech, it's not the easiest of the tracks. And in a uh, first sight eye, uh, so Brent Sech being difficult uh, and You'll be not being able to keep his first place. I, I, I hope it's not like this, but I don't think he will keep it. Again, uh, maybe yeah, feel the pressure. It's a difficult, difficult track. He's, uh, he's not feeling the pressure in quali once again. He's not only on pole with a one minute twenty three point seven. He's two and a half tenths up on his current time. So if you want to know how to get round this race course, well. Ah, now he comes into traffic. How is that? This is Pilgrim's Drop, so we're coming down to the middle section of the pit lane. <laughs> Cheers. I told you. <laughs> Straight into the pit below it. Uh, so there we go, here come, there is the pit entrance. It's a tricky one. A little shimmy, shimmy, shake to the right, then the left, then the right. This is the start finish line. Uh, corner run number one, Patrick Ben of course, when this course was originally built, this course was run in the opposite direction and on push bikes. Yeah, well, that's thinking for a second. And uh, they're coming round here, uh, down Pilgrim's Ride, down in, of course, to Druids. Graham Hill Bend here at the bottom, along the Cooper straight into Surtees. Surtees, which absolutely destroys my knees every single lap. I genuinely, genuinely 
get cold sweats every time I come near this corner. And then it is the long drop. That's Pilgrim drop down into Hawthorne Bend. And then three of the, it's quite possibly the scariest complex of corners in motorsport. I mean, surely it absolutely has to be. Uh, along Derek Minter Street, Westfield, Dingle Dell, and then Sheens. I mean, you've just got to be so committed. Blind breaking zones. Dab of brakes, throw it in, you have no idea what's happening. You can see the undulation. One touch of the grass on the other side. <laughs> it is good night, Vienna, right? No Cornet will save you from that one. Along through Stirlings and along into Clearways, because it's about the clearest run you get on track. Clark Curve. Oh, ho, 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 that's a whole lot of snap overs here from the Porsche. And uh, yeah, everyone's giving the Porsche knows exactly what Leon says had to do to keep that thing on the road. Doesn't improve on his position, but still a 124.6 Chroma Dix, and he's in fifth car mentalist up into fourth. The times are really coming together, and it is Floppy Fox leading the way with a 1 minute 23.4. Mm, I don't even think they. these are the final times, because I, from what I remember, the real times could come up to close to 1.33 and 1. Uh, although the, the track is a bit, uh, is around 30 degrees, but the air is very cold, so uh, the track is in the best conditions possible. So maybe a bit slower, but if they improve, I will, I wouldn't be so surprised by it. I think it, they could even hit a 22 uh, if it, if they even try hard. But what is most exceptional, better. Uh, it's a bit. Uh, um, you, you can you can clearly see the, the the specific problem here is that the first free position are all Ferrari, and the only Ferrari uh, away from it is in ninth place, and this just proves how how good of a car it is, and the Bentley, which is one of the best cars. Uh, uh, from from the community is just uh, the best uh, Bentley is just in eighth place, uh, and then it's in eleventh and so on. So I think the car can make a difference here. Also, the driver really makes the difference because you need to go full throttle, uh, and just in a spare moment uh, you have to lift off, and that spare moment is very critical because you can lose uh, two tenths just by lifting. Uh, slightly too early or too late and probably the race will be the most interesting part because if you qualify well you basically have a, an highway of space uh, to run your race and try to become a wall uh, do not let uh, anyone overtake you and here it's pretty easy because the turns uh, aren't the best uh, suited for, for any overtake but you can't uh, overdo uh, if you go too much on the line, you 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 could end up uh, ruining completely your race, uh, uh, finding yourself in the back of the pack, uh, and do everything from from zero uh, with very little possibility to gain uh, everything you lose, everything you lost uh, in in a span of half an hour, let's say. Yeah, it's definitely sorry. I was just getting the uh, the Twitch chat open. Right, I can't now communicate with anyone that's in the chat. Good evening, one and all that's in there. Obviously, Dex was in there uh, helping fix my full power, which it did fix Dex. I'm such a different boy. But Uni B! Uni B! I mean, we've got Chrome with saying the car is likely to potentially make a difference here. Pole position Ferrari, 3900. Ferrari, 210s. Ferrari, then it's Bruno and Alexis. Uh, car Metalist are turning champions in fifth in the Audi. Then we've got a Mercedes guided by SOP Cool in sixth. Leon Seely. Hello, hello, Dex. Ferrari on top. SAT is. Not only have we got three Ferraris on top, I got my coffee machine back from the manufacturers today, and I'm embarrassed to say in the four months that I've had it, it registered 256 litres of water, which have produced 656 cups of coffee. The irony of that was, I read that as I was drinking the fourth cup of coffee out of it today. 
that thing has been well used, so we can expect the excitement levels <laughs> to be ever so slightly higher tonight if we see Carrado sneak this any higher into the top 10 as well. It could be bingo hour for Uncle Raven. Uh, UDB coming round to complete another lap, still got four minutes to go. Plenty of time to improve, not on this go round. Floppy Fox, as I say, joined by ILE teammate Tropic Rock in third position. He's about to cross the start finish line. Does he have any time tucked in the back pocket of that Ferrari? Not at the moment. ERT Milden being unbiasedly cheered on by ERT's Dex Dexter. <laughs> Love to see him. <laughs> there he is in the boatly. The curb cheater that it is. Ferrari Forsaker. I also like if he pointed out to me that SOP fuel is forsaken the Ferrari as well. So for throwing him under the bus, I'm afraid to see Milden and Dex Dexter. That's all the camera time he's getting this week, so there we go. Uh, there's Carrado, there's Mick64, one last week, he is checking the kitty litter, he's back in the pits, he's in 10th, with well, less than three minutes to go. Uh, flying from, flying along in the Porsche as well, of course Lamborghini last season, went for the Porsche this season, working out not too shabbily. The mighty Eggy led the way one of the splits last week, will he do so again this week based on qualifying? Not likely. Some of the drivers didn't quite get the memo about changing over the indicators, but we do know that uh, Rogue, to be honest, I probably could have done a bit more uh, due diligence, but I assumed that they would have changed it. So yeah, we definitely know that Rogue, you're having a giggle, mate. Jason and Casper, along with the mighty, egg, mighty Eggy. He really does need to get, get, I think your ears are painted on when you hear me say eggy. Honestly, I don't think this is uh, my accent. I think it's your ears not working properly. <laughs> uh, Blue Mosquito there. And 13 flying from Mix 64. So what I'm going to do is move the chat there. And then I'm going to reopen uh, this bad boy. And this will give me a better idea of who is doing... What? Excellent. Yes, so it's you having a giggle, mate. Jason, Eddie, Cablo, Carrado, uh, APX Rogue, Leon Seely, unbelievably, uh, Casper, the Mighty Iggy, and Blue Mosquito that find themselves in Group Z. And of course, Group X, Carmentless Corner, uh, flying from Bruno, Mix 64, Floppy Fox, Yuri B. Tropic as well. I keep going to call him Tropic Rock, but he's changed it to ILE Tropic. I shall respect that. Uh, SOP Cool, and of course ERT, he who shall not be named for forsaking the Ferrari and throwing somebody else under the bus for forsaking the Ferrari. You floppy fox has got a contender. If anybody's going to have to do, if anybody's going to do a 22 Chromadex, who is your money going to be on with less than a minute to go? Mm. Hmm. <laughs> I uh, I'm thinking. We can because maybe getting into 22 right now, uh, Bobby Fox needs to gain three, two times, no, 154 times. So he just uh, lowered his time. So he is now two times away from UDB. And. At this time, I'm I'm thinking if Yuri B don't take pole, look, could he finish in first place? Finally, I mean it works as a tactic. If you can't win it from pole every time, just don't do the pole. Makes sense. Le no, it does. And Listen, that's is good. Yeah, keep it off pole. If you keep getting pole positions and not finishing the race, then don't get a pole position and see what happens. Because yeah, so qualifying easier. is vanity. Finishing position is sanity. As I do like to say, floppy is in the pits. And we can't even go on board with Yuri, so we'll stick with Helicam. He's invalidated his lap. Sure, yeah. So he won't score the ball. <laughs> so he won't get himself a pole position. Has. Oh, well, he has. Yeah, Yuri B has been out qualified. Liam Seeley's up in seventh. Has he got any more time? In the back pocket of the Porsche. Nope, he doesn't. Eddie's still out on track. 
but it's the pick, so this definitely won't count. Cablo is going to bring this one home. Group Z driver. Round Clark curve. I mean, how is that classed as a curve? That is definitely more than a curve. And he brings it in to the pits. So, let us quickly jump on board with Carmentalist before the game freaks out. Excellent. And then we can even return to Garage and bring the timetable up quickly and have a look at that qualifying, which does not, I repeat, does not have Yuri B on the top spot. Floppy Fox in the Ferrari, knocking it clean out the park. The time's have vanished, let's click that button and bring them back again, and we see knocking it clean out the park, he's taking two purple sectors there, my fascination with numbers, I apologise for nothing, eight laps he put in there, took two purple sectors, and the top spot, UDB definitely still in the fight, he's joining them on the front row of the grid with a purple sector in his pocket himself so definitely some fight in there for Yuri, but could the curse of pole position See, Yuri B win a race. Ho ho! Eileen Tropic uh, joining his teammate up in the top three, just fending off returning champion car mentalist with Bruno just in there as well. We're going to see some fascinating driving over the next hour and pit stop strategies with the track temperature sitting at 24 degrees, a lot of cloud. We've got ERT Milden in. 6th, SOPs, Leon Seely in 7th, Carrados in 8th, Eddie is on row number 5 of the grid side by side with SOP Cool in the Mercedes. See, if I was saying Ferrari, he'd be a lot further up the grid, Cool, just saying, Blue Mosquito, let's <laughs> see if he wins, he's going to finish on the podium, come in the interview box and absolutely slap me into my place full Scottish style. Uh, Blue Mosquito is on row number six side by side with Art Connor. Mix 64. Last week's race winner wasn't able to make the full qualifying session. Was a bit busy by the time he did get out on track. Managed to get himself 13th. How far up the field will he be going? Flying from in 14th the mighty Iggy. Uh, won the bottom split last week. Well done, order in quali this week anyway, but it's not about the qualifying, especially <laughs> around Brands Hatch. Hurrah! Uh, Cablo, APX Rogue, you having a giggle, mate? And Jason, all down at the bottom of the field there. And again, the times have just disappeared, you inconsiderate game. The drivers are on their warm up laps and. We're going to do this one with Carmenalist, and we're going to do it with that camera. And we're going to do it like that so we can see the teams in the corner. We'll maybe make that a bit smaller. Uh, just for the moment, and we'll change camera there. Fabulous. Uh, so, Chromadix, I mean, we've got a very short out lap, so uh, not much time to go over this one. But uh, from a race driving point of view, um, what sort of race strategy are you looking at? Straight half and half damage inflicting, or are you looking to stay close to someone and follow their lead, perhaps? What's uh, what are you saying to it, my friend? Oh, uh, it's uh, probably here for how much the track is smaller and everything taken into account. So, traffic from uh, people slower, uh, traffic from uh, maybe being lapped by people not fitting uh, uh, other drivers uh, trying to get on the same tactic as you, I think I would pit uh, in a completely odd manner, but uh, not too early because otherwise I'm into the traffic uh, or uh, into the uh, a lap behind uh, if it's if I'm really unlucky. Uh, but not even in the half half marker unless I'm completely in free space in free air, which I don't think is really possible here. So I think uh, here the best thing possible is to stay in touch with who you have in front and when you're noticing uh, you are a bit stuck behind and you want to get everyone by surprise, uh, I will pit around the 20 minute mark, honestly, I think it's the better option for, for your race, unless you want to go on a suicide and try to do the world race on 
on on behind someone else uh, and overheating your tires. I think uh, that's what I will do. Probably not even changing tires because yes, it's been stretch, but yeah, the position, the race position is fundamental. Uh, getting the undercut with change tire basically just relegate you too much behind. Indeed, yeah, the tire change has. Yeah, the drivers were asked in the pre-race interviews, have you prepared for typical British weather that might come up brands and they've all said as Chrome Vicks point out every uh, dry every practice session has been dry so far so if it rains I am dead said uh, Melvin in the Boatley which is ironic he's in the Boatley it comes with oars and outboard motor and life jackets and there's the green lights we're going to come into turn one in a very hot position as car mentalist in the Audi is looking to pressure the front two and it's going to leave space in the defensive style no he's not is he it's Tropic Rock trying to get the move done. Ooh, oh, Leon Seely is out of track in, in turn one. Oh, Leon Seely is out there, but it's still a battle over the front of the Lexus of Bruno. What a move there. He's absolutely mugged off both of them there. And he's got himself up clearly into third position. That is some serious driving. He knew exactly what he was doing there. He was watching the battle unfold ahead of them. The two Ferraris of Yuri B and Tropic Raw almost came together. Carmentalist thought he was going to get a run for glory there and it was denied. And it was Bruno in the Lexus that finds himself up in third position. And I tell you what, he has given Yuri B instantly all kinds of headaches. Uh, we'll jump back down the field very shortly, catch up with what's going on down there, but it's a battle for a podium position instantly before the first lap is even done. And Bruno is on a charge, he's starting down in fifth position, he's up the inside, he's in the second position, what a move in the legs, and oh and he's run wide, oh the three corners of hell, I've seen a spit them out, oh they've spat him back out again, the Lexus is now a limping dog along uh, the clear way, oh as they come into Clark's car to finish off the lap, he's defended the position, a lot of uh, a lot of cones getting uh, spread asunder there by Yuri B. That's a whole lot of rear spoiler action for Bruno to deal with, but he is the man on the charge. Five places. He's made it up. I know there is a whole field going on down there, but you can't tell me this battle up at the front is not the most tantalising thing you've seen in a while. We're only on lap number two, and already we've seen that podium position change. And Floppy Fox has checked out. Look at him, he's away down the road. Yuri B has got himself a whole lot of headache. That Lexus for Bruno. He is flying in race trim. That is Carmentless behind him in Tropic. ILE started in third, down to fifth. Bruno started in fifth, up to third. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. There's SOP Cool up a couple of places as well. In the Mercedes. I'm going to have to catch my breath for just ever so <laughs> I mean, Chrome's like, how's that for an opening lap? What have you been watching? The same as me, or what have you got going on, mate? Uh, I was actually trying to watch both and for the first for oh a bit a bit of a battle in in the in behind the grid in all all battling for the same uh, eighth position and there has been a incredible battle around five people that ended without any accident uh luckily and yeah it's it's been such so it's what i i was hoping for constant trying to get in into the front of the one. Uh, 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 oh, cool! Is already pitting, trying to undercut everything possible. Just two laps in, and he's already lap. He's already pitting as Leon Shiri. They both got getting into the undercut, probably trying to get into a different, uh, di different uh, strategy compared to anyone else. Yeah, Milden and Iggy have been in as well. I really was paying a lot of attention to the battle up the front. Carrados with an absolute stormer up at the front as well, slightly aided by these pit stops as well. But he is in seventh position. He has got Blue Mosquito, hubba bubba teammate of ERT Milden uh, in eighth position. It's his teammate Milden that's come into the pit. So we're seeing strategies unfolding all over. Will we see Slipstream afford oh, This is mix on Blue Mosquito. Uh, Bruno is charging down Floppy Fox. We've got Yuri B defending from Carmental. It's now Tropic Rock being close attention to this battle right in the pocket. Carrado in the Ferrari is the cork in the ball and a mix 64 on a charge. He won last week. He's going to make an absolute blinder of a move. They're side by side up the inside into the right hander. He gets that job absolutely done just before Ooh, the penultimate corner. Oh, and we've got a man off the track. Oh, that was that corner. 
well held on the brakes, but that is going to leave him a limping Cablo. It's going to latch on the slipstream into Clark Curve. We've completely lost track of the battle that we're watching there, but it was Mick 64 making an absolute cracker of a move. He finds himself up in the ninth. He's on a comeback point, that is for sure. Flying from comes into the pits to join Cool, Milden, Leon Seeley and the mighty Eggy. Trovic Rock trying to get his way past Carmentless. He's still trying to get his way past UDP Bruno, who has had an absolute stormer. Up from fifth to second. Now finds himself five point five seconds behind race leader Floppy Fox who has had zero karma time for his heroics because he's just basically put the foot down and disappeared while everything has gone off behind on top of rock. Still on the Taylor card mentalist. Uh, Yuri B just a bit down the road there. Uh, so yeah, the defend down, playing in the hands of Yuri B. And hold on to that podium position. Carrado in eighth, Blue Mosquito in ninth. Art Connor rounding out the top ten after losing his breaks. He's got Cabo still hunting them down, APX, Rogan 12th, Casper is in 13th, we've got Jason in 14th, you having a giggle mate, is in 15th, leading the way for the pitted drivers, Milden's just got a move on X, teammate Cool, uh, Flying Throat is in 18th, which is third out of the pitted drivers, Leon Seeley just coming to Pilgrim's Drop as well, uh, fourth, and the mighty Eggy currently in fifth, so Seeley and Eggy, the two drivers from the Bottom split drivers, uh, Cool, Frome and Milden all top split, so three uh, versus two, full grid of 20 drivers, only a brand's hatch because you get such race and he's going up the inside and the Ferrari proving to be the dominant car, Tropic Rod trying to fight his way back but he's going to hang on to a car mentalist. This is how you battle round the scores into the left-hander, Chromedix, amazing stuff, the Ferrari's got him up the inside, does he? He's got the switch back. Ferrari's plat. inside. I made it. Mm, the, I think this is side by side by side. The Audi probably doesn't want to, to give out the position so easily. Now it's just a drag race towards the, uh, the right hander, which is won by the Ferrari, which is now in front of the Audi and in fourth position. Yeah, very, very, very nicely done here by Tropic. Uh, make it back. Position at the expense of Carmentalist, of course, these two trading positions that were left to them by Bruno, still 5.5 seconds is the gap between himself and Floppy Fox. Uh, Carmentalist on Tropic Rot, there's Eddie and Mix in the background, Mix making more moves, he's up to 7th. Again, pit stop aided with some of the drivers that have come in, there's another driver coming in, so the 20 minute mark, Carmentalist has come in to the pits as well. That is going to answer some questions very early doors indeed. I think the drivers all listened to the start of the broadcast event. Ooh, what? mix, uh, uh, you know, outside of uh, what is Eddie? Trying, Eddie trying to defend his position against Mix. Oh yeah, he is in the left. They were side by there. side the towards turn one and two. Yeah, they are nose to tail at the moment. Let's see where Carmentalist has come out of the pits and I'll tell you what, he is behind Milden, cool and he is side by side with Flying from it to turn one, little bit of contact there, outlap tyres are going to be side by side into turn one <laughs> oh they're absolutely side by side, Carmentalist really doesn't want to be left on his own today he really does need to have someone side by side with him, but a separation anxiety here around Brands Hatch he's uh, got uh, from keeping them very, very, oh, very cosy indeed as the Audi and the Porsche make their way up to Pilgrim's Drop. But it is Cool and Milden who are still well within striking distance of one another that are ahead of Car Mentalist who was up there in fourth and we saw how close he was. He wasn't far off when he came in. <laughs> Can't wait to see what happens when these guys come in and out of the pits. Brand Hatch always delivers. I can safely say I'm glad I'm sat here with a microphone, <laughs> not a steering wheel in my hand. Flying from Lucy trying to get a move done on Car Mentalist then. Uh, no respect for the freshly pitted driver uh, from realising that he is uh, net fourth 
in the race at the moment, and that is a podium spot sat right in front of him. Uh, let's just, like, there we go. Let's get some lap times as to come in. That was his outlap, of course. It was a 29 with 26 for Froome then. So he'll potentially feel like he's slightly held up, and that's the wrong card there. That's what we're looking for there. We'll get there eventually. Oh, big crash. Oh, big crash, big crash. Give yeah, me some Connor numbers. and Giggle. Uh, Connor, you have Giggle, Giggle and Jason are oh. trying to battle for the same position, but the Mercedes has hit uh, the Aston in the rear. And Teresa, Terrasso, there's been an incident between the McLaren and the Mercedes uh, uh, some minutes ago, and there are some damages in their car uh, as well, pretty clear to be seen. And I think they are battling really, really low in terms of uh, where they could be. But I think the damages are also uh, uh, ruining the races because front down force uh, here is fundamental. It definitely is, and there is, as you say, positions trading places. We just saw Carlo and Blue Mosquito uh, swap Ooh, places off track. there. Is Jason off track? Oh, yep, he is. And that is Art Connor. No, it's not Art Connor. That's ERT Milden. Nice, Milden. Yeah, that is Milden in the gang coming through. Cool. And there he is. Oh, right on cue. Couldn't roll the R's at oh, Too much coffee today, perhaps. Uh, let's see if Mix, he's actually closing the gap. So the Lexus is absolutely proving the car to be in race trim, uh, with Mix making it up a plethora of places along with Bruno, uh, making it up three. Bruno, of course, on the podium. He is, they're, yeah, they're pretty much trading lap times at the moment. 5.9 second is the gap. So. Overall, Floppy Fox is finding those tens. Oh, here and there. big crash again! Uh, again, uh, you have a giggle has, has been involved and is now in the Ooh. other way of the road and has been in contact with, I think, Connor. Yeah, Connor has been dead. No, Connor. Uh, I think it was Caspar, probably. One, by the way, one Mercedes has been hit by him. Yeah, I think it was Connor once again. And collected a heavy, heavy amount of damages on his Mercedes. Oh, yeah, that is going to slow him down hugely. Um, yeah, oh, in behind is the Porsche of flying from who wants to pass the the one of the fastest Porsche, in, well, one of the fastest drivers in the track is now in 15th position, who has now just, uh, just overtake uh, overtook uh, Connor, and uh, he's now leading in to overtake uh, even Jason McLaren, and I don't understand why they are not pitting. It's it's not, uh, I think they are losing way more time staying, standing out of, the, of track instead of pitting, and that's pretty strange from from them. In fact, I think the Porsche wants to do the overtake on the outside on the McLaren, and he somehow made it, probably. Yeah, he has, yet, yeah. But they are getting into the left hander and also the Mercedes oh. getting into the outside and they touched! Uh, yeah, Jason just collecting the nose. Uh, it's hard to keep up with what's going on there. We've got Flying Throne was making his way through there, of course. Um, we've got Leon Seeley uh, was tucked in there as well. He's taking his pit in the Audi of Carmentalist not far behind it. Mike Yegi in there as well. Uh, so tumbling down the order will be Jason. And a lot of blue flags going on around him. Uh, I did say that Floppy Fox was finding the odd tenth here and there. Uh, he's definitely found another few as well. Uh, he's got himself some uh, uh, some breathing air there. Hey, Doc Nailbender, how we doing? And Buggy as well. Doctor in the house, how we doing, Doc? Welcome, welcome, welcome along. We've got Buggy in the house Ooh, as well. Ooh, Leon Shilly into the flying from, into inside in turn one. And Leon Shilly made the position on flying from, who had just briefly overtook Leon Shilly. So, battle of Porsches around Brent Sasha right now. Yeah, it is, yeah. Force on force battle. Um, Baggy, yeah, how you doing? Get in the go line, doing well. Tropic started up in third, dropped down a place, took it back again uh, when Carmentalist came into the pits. 
Uh, he's just got himself past Jason in the McLaren. Uh, he's got Froome ahead of him. Leon Seeley battling SOP Cool and ERT Milden leading the way. Out of the drivers that were pitted, they were very close. They were just ahead of Tropic Rot. In fact, when they came in, the UDP just ahead of them. Bruno and the Lexus has been absolutely flying to get himself up to second. But the Ferrari of Floppy Fox is absolutely all conquering at the moment. It is safe to say. You having a Google bite? He has come in to the pits to take his mandatory stop. Uh, Jason's got a lot of traffic in there, so he definitely needs to get himself into the pits as well, I would say, especially uh, as Chromalex was saying this bit, very aero-dependent. Um, getting yourself through some of the corners uh, on this track, Dingle Dell uh, springs immediately to mind, of course, along through Westfield. Um, so, yeah, get, in, get that repaired, get back out on track. The two Porsches still going on. It is Sealy with the upper hand at the moment, from though. Uh, looking to retake that position. Of course, he's just switched from the Lamborghini last season. Uh, there's Milden caught up to the back. That's Casper who's got past. So, next, set, third, second, third in the race. That's Milden coming through. Uh, Making his way past Casper. Uh, cool, very close indeed. But Milden is stretching that gap out a bit. Leon Seeley. Still winning the battle of the Porsches here and the battle of the Britain, perhaps. Uh, ooh, I tell you what, that's from getting himself a lot of dust on the tyres. Manages to collect himself, though, gets a good run on the exit, which is all important. Doesn't manage quite to get the rotation on the car there. Uh, Casper still just ahead of SOP Cool. And Floppy Fox really is going to town there. Uh, Chromadix, that's him now. 6.8. Oh, is it going to be extended? Let's have a look and see. Any second now. 6.9, so another tenth there. Uh, so Floppy Fox, as far as uh, openings to Brands Hatch go, that is pretty much fairy tale stuff so far for him. Yeah, he has uh, used a lot of help from the initial. Uh, the very initial stages of the race because most of the drivers were battling very very hard in behind him and I think that was the main mistake uh, from the group because hard, uh, battling so hard uh, uh, for this, what was the second position really uh, annihilated the possibility of the, the world group to get close uh, to Flappy Fox uh, enough to let him worry about uh, everyone else because as soon as the battle was over the gap was about five six seconds and automatically the second place which uh, runner was at the time UDB is now Bruno just uh, worried uh, about who was behind not in front of him and I really think if Floppy Fox doesn't make enough uh, it doesn't make uh, a huge mistake. Uh, he just needs to worry about uh, his race pace and uh, not go over the limit too much. And uh, that's safe for him. He, he could do anything even in, in the pit strategy because the lap guys will be a lap behind and whoever is in traffic uh, will still be uh, usually in front if we uh, are talking about the the ones who, are, who have pitted are usually back uh, if we are talking about the ones who have not pitted yet. So the real question is uh, about the Porsches, honestly, because uh, Leon Sealy has made a mistake in turn one, but uh, he quickly rejoined into pit, and I think it was the, clev the, the best move for him, because in this way he has clean air, to effectively go at his pace, uh, which is around the sixth place, uh, as shown in qualifying. Uh, so I'm pretty curious to see if uh, his uh, er very early pit stop uh, helped him a lot, uh, considering the first the group in front of him who was battling so hard for getting uh, second place. And Bruno Skitos made a mistake in the turn one, as I was speaking. 
and has lost the position on to uh I think no one yet, but he has lost I think uh, at least five seconds from Corrado, but uh, no position lost for him. Okay, so yeah, he's lost time, but not the position. Who was I just on board with? There? Uh, oh yeah, no, we were watching mix sixty four. Uh, what an absolute charge! Uh, mix has been on, and the Lexus, the two Lexus, doing well, obviously not as well as the Ferrari. Uh, mix did win uh, last week's race, the first race. Uh, after the split, so let's put on top of the standings. Um, I'm just having a run down there to see um, if I can see any notes from him, but he is running at the moment very, very, very quickly indeed. Still got a few drivers to take the pit. You having a giggle, mate, is still in the pits, or he's back in the pits. He's already cleared his marker, uh, so he's come back in. This is fourth and fifth, though, uh, on track. Uh, Mix, I'm definitely be hoping not uh, to get caught up around here, I would imagine. Um, with Tropic Rot, he was saying with uh, the, or so he was asked, with round one done of the split championship format, are you where you expect it to be in your split? Uh, he's been jog jogging about the positions this evening, and he has said, kinda, I could have finished a place or two higher if things went well, but it is what it is. He was also asked to be returned to Britain for the next two weeks. Do you think you will do better this week than you did in the pre-season race around Donington? Another heart stopper of a track. Uh, he's saying, oh, Tropic has done a 360. So it's definitely, well, although in saying that, he didn't actually race at Donington, but he is just uh, he would say he was, he was saying that Silver uh, Silverstone is the hardest. Brands doesn't really have a cushion. There's not much rest. The corners just keep on coming at Brands, and uh, yeah, what keeps coming there is some bad luck for Tropic Rock, or I at least Tropic, and that's him off into the sand. We'll call that one course of the commentator definitely. Uh, APX Rogue has just been overtaken by uh, Milden. Uh, Casper has been overtaken by Cool and Seely as well uh, to move them further up the rankings, having of course taken their pit stop. And Floppy Fox is playing an absolute blinder at the moment. He's coming up to Jason in the McLaren, 15 laps in, and he is now just over 7 seconds, 7.2. So he is, at the moment, Chromadex, he's finding himself half a second a lap, effectively, uh, over uh, Bruno, who is six seconds ahead of Yuri, who has been on pole position three times this season. So Fox's pace here, it uh, is safe to say, is uh, pretty decent. <laughs> yeah, I already in qualifying, we've seen that his pace was, ju was already good. He managed to get two uh, two times from UDB and up to four to who was the third position holder was Tropic in that moment. And this just proves uh, that it's not just qualifying, but he also has some great race pace and he can keep up with the times he made in qualifying. And he's pulling up at least three times a lap and he's ending up getting even five in a single lap and i think he's just hammering his tires and his car in the best way possible he made seven seconds in 16 laps so effectively nearly half a second every single lap and considering everything uh, it's astonishing that he the other Ferrari can't really keep his pace. Uh, not sure if it's about any damage or anything, but I just think he just found the perfect spot for his Ferrari in this driving style. And compared to, to other to other times uh, where his Ferrari was around sixth position, fifth position, I think he he need, he he's starting to understand how the car works uh, and he's he's really getting the maximum possible 
output from him from it. Yeah, he really, really, really is. Um, I was just having a look. I was going to do a uh, Carmento stacks. He is the returning champion, but uh, Floppy Fox. Um, he was saying, uh, we're round one done in the split championship format. Are you where you expected to be in your split? And in hindsight, you said, I messed up my pit last race, which I'll correct for Brands Hatch. My fuel was bad, plus the stop was terrible. Up and down a few times before I got serviced. Other than that, it was an okay race. Uh, we'll return to Britain for the next two weeks. Do you think you will do better than you did in the pre-season race around Donington? I always giggle when I say that track name. It's an absolute horror show for drivers. It's just wah, roller coaster stuff. Uh, he says, yes, I took Donny with a pinch of salt and quit. None of that here. Of course, that was a pre-season race. I'm sure we'll see none of that from Floppy here, especially with a 7.4 second lead. Uh, what tracks out of the two Britain tracks do you find the hardest? Brands Hatch or Silverstone, of course, those are the two tracks that are on the calendar. Uh, he says that Silverstone, he says he likes it, but he struggles to get to consistently get fast times there for some reason. Go ahead and the fourth question is that, is it important to get a good qualifying session around the track where one hub hasn't visited yet? And he said, for past experience, there could be a lot of death at Brands. There can be overtakes too. So quality is as important as every race, but there are chances to move up. And how prepared are you for typical British weather that might come at Brands Hatch, which doesn't look like it's going to. And he says he's putting a good amount of practice in. He's never seen rain in the server. If it's wet, I will have a setup or two on the go. So he was definitely preparing for the worst just in case. Prepare for the worst and hope for the best. And that's absolutely what's happening for him at the moment. Mix 64 comes into the pits. Milden's already passed. Rogue and cool. Milden through. And I was just trying to jump on with Mix. Yeah, pretty quick stop as well, actually. But that is from through as well. Carmentalist. Oh, from going a bit sideways there. Was that net code? No, he really was lighting them back tyres up into turn one. Uh, Carmentalist is through on Mix. So Mix back out behind Carmentalist. Net six then. Uh, the mighty Eggy has uh, just got himself past Casper. So it's a great drive again in the race by Eggy. How far up the field is he going to find himself? Uh, cool is just going past APX. Rogue then. Rogue, of course, still to take his pit. Tucks back into place. Uh, Bruno's just come past the pit entrance, so is UDB and Tropic Rot. They've all stayed out as well. So has Eddie. Carrado's joined that club. Uh, Blue Mosquito. ERT, he who shall not be named. <laughs> His Hubba Bubba Bentley teammate comes past the pit as well. Cablo. And there is the Hubba Bubba team. I did wonder if these early pit stops were going to produce some uh, team on team action Cablo comes in Milden uh, makes his way through and the next driver on track to him to conveniently give him a slingshot and a bit of a slipstream it is Blue Mosquito so uh, yeah that one has played right into their team hands and I tell you because Blue Mosquito's actually got a fair bit of track ahead of him as well, that is nice and clear, Chromadix. So, uh, Team Hubba Bubba have played an absolute blinder as we come to the halfway stage in the race. Yeah, as it stands, uh, Milden is one of the fastest on track, uh, and if he reaches on, on, on Mosquito, I don't think there will be any difficulties on letting him pass, uh, but there could be some. Uh, teamwork in trying to get Mosquito faster and faster towards the race and trying to get him into some uh, uh, some upper position considering some of the of the of the drivers have pit uh, we can't really say where a driver is in terms of uh, of, of the race um, probably uh, I, while, while you were talking I was doing some some quick uh, uh, some quick matching in terms of time and I think Milden could be up to second place, or even more, because... Ooh. Ooh, there is a... Wait, 
There is a yellow flag. No? Ah, yeah, it was Jason. I think he spawned to turn three. Not sure what. Okay, yeah. And yeah, I was saying that Milden, uh, considering how fast he is right now, and considering the gaps uh, and the distance uh, and how much time you need to pit, uh, I think uh, Milden could be the actual second place driver. Well, I, I will be sure now because Bruno has just gone into the pits. Uh, so now <laughs> I will get a, a visible proof of what I'm saying. If there Excellent. will be a battle or or if Milden will just overtake completely uh, Bruno's Lexus. Yeah, he's just coming into sector three now. Through those three right handers. This is going to be close actually. It's very it's very long. Bruno is changing his tire, I think. Oh, and I tell you what. He put a huge load of fuel into his car because it was way longer than expected. But he is definitely ahead of Milden still. Yeah. Yep, he's definitely done what he needs to do. Is Milden now though ahead of Yuri D because Bruno and Milden are pretty close. If Bruno did change his tyres, he's going to have to go through the old outlap tyre syndrome. Or if he's putting fuel, he is going to be running heavier than he was going into the pits, flying from and Leon Seeley in the Porsches, still very close to one another indeed. Three Ferraris in the top three, four in the top five. Oh, Carrado. dropping out of track and oh. he saved his car. So no problem for him. I think he just lost the... A very tiny, light, little amount of time, but uh, he did a bit of a rally into the. Oh, the post the, is going the off. Seal is going to lose the place to flying from down Pilgrim's Drop. And that is Surtees, the corner I was talking about at the start of the program. I do not like that. And the Porsche Leon Seely definitely didn't like it on lap number 22, and it is from that has made his way through. He now leads the Battle of the Porsches, 28 minutes to go. Well, we see more trading places there. Carrado and Eddie still to take their pits, fourth and fifth. Now getting very close to one another as well. Will we see an overtake there before the pit stop? You having a giggle, mate, and Art Connor look like they might be retiring to the pits. They've been in there a fair old while. Uh, Jason and Casper still to take their pit stop along with Rogue who is the next car ahead of these two here, uh, Leon Seeley and Flying Throw. The Battle of the Beatles, as Dex was pointing out in the chat. Uh, good evening, Simon. How are we doing? It's uh, asking, how's it going, John and Christian? Uh, it's going great. It's, uh, yeah, everybody out on track, absolutely going out of Hammer and Tom Brands Hatch. Uh, never failing to disappoint. I'm sure uh, Chromadix will echo those thoughts, my friend. Yep. Yes. Everything good. <laughs> it's battling around Princess, one of the best track around England. So, yes. And, oh, wait. Car Mentalist. Yep. Well Quietly. <laughs> Quietly, he's making his way into the Porsches. Not just under the radar, because... He, he was basically ignored for the last 25 minutes. And now, I think he wants the 11th place, which will be the 10th or even 9th place, considering the pit stops, for and take that from the Porsches. And the Rogue could actually help him a lot because they are teammates. So the Porsches are now in the Audi sandwich. And I really think Rogue will defend as hard as he can was the Porsches until uh, his teammates come in very close to him and we let everyone pass. That's the cleverest thing to do. Yep, certainly the fairest thing to do, but will team orders come into play? Well, Rogers needs oh. to, to pit, so yeah. 
championship to run for that is his teammate there, Carmel. Let's see him turning champion. He's got mixed 64. Yeah, Rog is really defending hard towards the Porsche. He's trying so hard to let his teammate come close. But the problem is that even Mix is coming, is getting close to him. So it's, it's a bit backfiring at, at the moment, the, the tactic. Yeah, as yet coming to Pilgrim Stop, you can, yeah, there we go. There is the Lexus of Mix 64. Uh, getting very, very close indeed. That's not the button. Ah! There we go. <laughs> but yeah, the Audi absolutely hanging on in there. Uh, 23 laps in with 25 minutes still to go. Ooh, and it's Leon. But it's lost out there. The Audi closing up. So is the legs. There's a bit of a wiggle from the Audi though in the backwash. Yeah, from Leon. Ooh, very close to Clark. And the Lexus is now saying hello. <laughs> and he's going to go around the outside. Carmelis is going to find himself well and truly boxed in. The Lexus backs right out of it. Doesn't want to be on the outside going into turn one. Definitely had a look though. Down into oh, the inside. going to be on the outside again. Ooh, oh, the push a bit wide and now he takes, tries to take the inside into the hairpin. No, not really. No, you just said that slight uh, intention. But yeah, I'll tell you, that is how close it is. Oh, the getting. Porsche! The Porsche into the Audi Frog! Oh, and the got, Porsche into the inside, inside uh, getting the black and pink Audi, and there is also a battle behind because the Audi is battling with the Lexus for the same, posi for the same position, some meters behind. And they are side by side into the right hander, and the Porsche getting into the outside of the Audi. And the legs says it's getting the past the Audi, so Mix has got past Car yes. Metalist. And that now. So the strategy completely is, backfired. Yeah, the strategy has backfired a bit. Um, but it is APX Rogue in the Audi, has been overtaken by Flying From. Rogue still, of course, to take his pit, his teammate Car Metalist. Took just in there, but he is now at the back of this group, and it is Mix 64 who is looking the quickest out of all of them. Look how much he's closing up on that Porsche here. Definitely the quicker. There's Corrado coming in to the pit. Rogue decides to stay out. Uh, giving some slipstream to Leon, who's given some slipstream to the Lexus of Mix 64. Last week's race winner up inside the turn one. With Angel Sphere to tread on the last lap. And as the Lexus getting done, four sessions go round the outside. He's not going to make that one stick. And I tell you that out he nearly loses his nose, he manages to get so close in the break-in with Alexis making that move, not quite making it stick though, and it is Mix 64, uh, there's Jason just getting himself right out of the way of this one, definitely not a train of cars you want to be getting caught up in as we come down Pilgrim's drop once again, it is Mix 64 this time, we're going to get past, car, past car mentalist's teammate, that maybe got a bit close. Oh, there's oh, a bit of touch. Oh, yeah, and Leon Sealy's closed the gap there. Alexis had to get a They push into the inside, the trying to get uh, into mix. Uh, and, oh, oh, he made per a perfect move. Uh, just oh, 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 oh. <laughs> just not hitting him for a very, very... Oh, the out is out. Oh, Carmen, Carmen this is out of the track. Yeah, he's gone off there. Jason's let him stay back in front. All kinds of action unfolding there. And I tell you, SOP cool. He is behind Eddie then, so Eddie's come back out the pits. Wow, talk about flying under the radar. Eddie's back out in sixth position, so very quick pit stop there. He's defending from Cool at the moment. Mercedes on Bentley there. Leon Seeley in the pores trying to get back past Mix 64. All of them chasing down APX Rogue. Teammate of Car Mentalist in 12th is chasing down Leon Seeley. In mix 64, the mighty Iggy in 13th. He's pitted early. It'll be interesting to see where he comes back out, or where the rest of the field come back out. Uh, with uh, Rogue still a pit, but he's still tucked uh, right in this little battle here. He does have mix 64 trying to get past him. Leon Seely and Tarmel is now dropping off the back ever so slightly. Mix is going to go round the outside. No, he's not. And the Porsche is going to get a great run. And he is caught right back up again. Mix 64 with another Leon Seeley sized headache as the Porsche gets an absolute flyer through the second right hander. 
Dingle Dell once again. And it really will ring your bell if you get it wrong on the exit, though. All three drivers as crisp as you like. SOP Cool still unable to get him as we pass the boat lay of Eddie. Milden no longer leading the drivers that have taken these pit. Of course, Bruno saw fit to that, came into the pits from second position. He was 7.9 seconds behind this Ooh, man. Oh, the Lexus in outside us, there is a touch! And the Audi is out of tracking! Nearly hit the Lexus of... Oh. Uh, the, the Porsche of Leon Shiri, while the Lexus has been hit by the Audi on the right part of the of the car, and the three drivers passed the Rose Audi. Yeah, so Rogue then, bit of contact, finds himself off in turn one. And yeah, right at the start of the lap, absolutely the worst place to have an incident. It's going to take a while before he get to the pit entrance. Trying to get himself back in, dropping down the positions. The mighty Iggy is going to be a lot closer than that four. Also, Carmentris made, a move, made the move on Leon Shili. Okay, yep, so Carmentlist is passing Leon Seely as well in the Porsche. Mm -hmm. So he's stuck one under the radar. SOP Cool in 7th. Uh, still trying to get his way past Eddie. Uh, Milden, net 2nd, or yeah, I'm going to say net 4th. Ooh, Fro fourth. made a mistake. He's getting overtaken oh. by Mix already. Mix on the outside, oh. trying to get the overtake done, not yet, but I think he's going to try again the outside, into turn one, trying to get a revenge on what he did on, on just the lap before, and he's get, trying to get the overtake done, and he perfectly made the overtake without even touching the portion somehow, considering how fast they were getting into the, the, right, the downhill right-hander. Yeah, that was a very, 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 very nice overtake. Indeed. Mix absolutely flying. After starting way down the order, only setting six qualifying laps, finds himself comfortably up into eighth position with Tropic Rock, Yuri B, and Floppy Fox still to take their pit. That's Leon Seely. It's just moving over to let Floppy Fox through. Uh, Rogue dropping down the order then. He is between, Ro uh, between Blue Mosquito or is Mosquito through? Uh, not quite. So he is out ahead of Blue Mosquito. And uh, is still very close here though. And how close is it going to be when Floppy Fox, UDB and Tropic Rock come out of the pits? What sort of lap times have Bruno and Milden? Putting in since to go out with the pits 24 4, 25 1. Not too bad. Milled in 24 4, 25 1. Wow. Have I just done the same car twice? Or do they literally have identical times? No, no. Wow. 23 8. It's his best, sorry. And his last lap was a 24 8. So second off, he's quickest, but still sub. 25. So very quick lap times there. I think uh, Floppy Fox is definitely 23.5 and 25.2 .25 on his last lap. I'm guessing that may be uh, a bit of traffic getting past, but 23.5. Uh, oh, too quick on the buttons for your own good. More haste, less speed. Uh, there is a very speedy speedster, UDB, currently lapping, lapping in second, 24-0, so half a second down on Floppy Fox's best lap, 25-3, slightly up on his last lap. Again, I would say, mostly traffic even stop jumping in there, and Tropic Rock. Ooh, so Corrado turning the overtake on Iggy, nearly touched them, and... Getting into the right hander, Corrado really wants the uh, on this position, and quite frankly, I think he changed his tire because he's very quick compared to Iggy, and I think he will try to get the position done in turn one in the next lap probably. Perhaps. Yeah, he's looking that way. 
the so Ferrari Stallions. Oh, yeah. No, oh, thinking about it, thinking about it. The Ferrari Stallions just. Oh, 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 code brown for the Honda driver there. Now, he thought Carrado was about to inspect the upholstery in the back seats of that Honda there. Not quite on this lap. But the two of them are very, very close, battling for position within their group. Of course, both groups, top 10 and bottom 10, are fighting for the same uh, prizes, uh, which is a £25 voucher uh, provided by sponsors and partners alike. Um, we are, of course, uh, in to round number five, which is the second round of the split. It's an eight-week season. Round number three will reset the points and put the drivers into their respective splits, Group X and Group Z. Keep an eye on this. I tell you, I'm watching this one patiently. Uh, Corrado's showing all the patience in the world as well. Uh, so, yeah, Group X and Group Z. And they uh, were put into teams as well just to keep me and our Chromadex and I well and truly on our toes. Um, so last week was the first week of the post-split racing. Uh, Carmenas on Chrome, Carrado still trying to get past Iggy. And it was Mix and Iggy that took top honours for their respective splits in the first race last week. Uh, Milden and Cool joining Mix on the podium for the top group and Rogue and Eddie, group Y, uh, making their way on to the podium there. Uh, Carmetalist is proving away there, he's getting very close in the Surtees once again. The Ferrari and the Honda still right on top of one another. And no more pit stops to hide from uh, from these two, if you are looking at the track now, look how close he's getting there. Uh, looking at the track yeah, at the moment, who do we expect to see come into the pits first out of the top three drivers, and where and who do you expect Yuri B to still be ahead of when he does? Honestly, I really think all of them will get in the pits uh, as later possible because it means uh, getting less traffic uh, and counter less, less cars uh, uh, getting in uh, trying to battle uh, with less people they will just wait until the very last lap to get the the, the pit done and i think that oh god the make it into the inside the mm, not really in fact he went wide in turn one and uh, honestly i think Floppy Fox will be in front without any doubt. Yuri B probably around 6th uh, position, prob perhaps. Not really, wow. because I remember the gap between Bruno and, the, and Yuri was in the order of 7 seconds. And now the gap between Bruno and Milden is 7 seconds. So we could see some great battle around that position. And Tropic... Uh, probably into... Mix was battling with him, so around there, I guess. Well, Mix, uh, Mix uh, in that group battle a lot, so I think he will be around Eddie, probably. It's possible, or in a sort of sandwich between Cool and Mix. That's my guess. Yeah, somewhere in around there. It's certainly going to change the lay of the land with the team championship. Carado still trying to find his way past Eggy. He's very close to the uh, inside the clutch curve, bit of contact, a lot of dust on the tyres for the Honda, but Carrado is through. I'm sure the sewers will be looking at that one. We've got Carmentalist in the Audi trying to get his way past Frome still. Uh, these two well known to one another after their uh, close battles last season, Frome finishing in the top three. Yeah, Corrado let uh, the Honda pass again, so I think he understood it was a bit of a, of a hard move and let him pass again. Who death is that? Oh, Carmenta is with... Ah, no, he's letting him pass the, the Floppy Fox. 
So Fabius has slapped uh, at the moment the knife position car, and I think it will help him a lot because Mix. Uh, well, Mix is going to be the most beneficial car about this because mm, this means this group will be far, uh, 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 even more far uh, than now, and. He will just need to worry about the ones in front. Who is gaining? He is gaining a second a lap to them. He is now 2.7 seconds in the lap before he was 3.8 seconds from Cole. So we can see Mix get, trying to get not only seventh but even sixth position. And he was 10, 10 seconds behind when he overtook uh, from. Yes, he really is absolutely flying. Dex is saying that in the chat as well. Mix is on fire. He is absolutely melting the rubber on that Lexus. And uh, that is a car that can absolutely take it. Uh, Mix is on a charge. Of course, Bruno, uh, we're keeping a close eye on him in the first stint. We've barely mentioned him in stint number two. He is, of course, in the Lexus as well. Uh, finds himself the net lead of the race. Uh, he was in second when he came at the pits. He's leading the charge of the drivers that have taken his pit, taken their pits. And he's got himself a decent enough gap over Milden in second, fifth overall. Eddie there in sixth. Great drive from Eddie so far. Uh, SOP cool there in seventh, mixing eighth from in ninth, and Carmental is still just behind from there. Uh, rounding out the top 10. Carrado and Iggy are still separated yeah, by no more than an elastic band. <laughs> oh, Carrado into, into, into the inside. Into the left hander. And Carrado makes the position finally. Maybe not side by side into the final corner of the track. But I think Carrado could try to outbreak him. And it's like this. So Carrado makes finally the position on Donda. Who just. <laughs> <laughs> nearly oh, lost the, oh, the rear oh, of the car. Oh. And Yuri Beast finally <laughs> made his pit. Indeed he has. I tell you what, Bruno's close. Wow. Bruno is close. He's coming to the last corner now. Yuri B is going to need one seriously quick stop and drop if he's got any hope of staying up ahead of Bruno. And he's got no hope of staying up ahead of Bruno. Bruno's on the start finish today. Yuri B is moving now, but there is Bruno. Zoom, zoom, zoom and past. Milden is on the start finish straight. So Bruno is back ahead of Yuri B. And Yuri B is ahead of ERT Milden. So it's net third for Yuri B. Net second for Bruno. And it's all down to these last two Ferraris taking their pit stop. Carmental is still trying to find his way past flying from mix 64 is definitely on the hunt as well he's looking to improve on his position at the expense of SOP cool in the turn two all very close there and the mighty Iggy is back ahead of Carrado so we missed one there Cablo APX Rogue Blue Mosquito Casper and Jason all taking their pit stop corner and you having a giggle mate retiring to the pit Carmental is still trying to get past Froome and Mix on Cool is not going to wait any time soon in fact this one's only going to be done when and if Mix gets past 7 minutes left to go that still means plenty times to get laps in at least 5 given how short the lap around here is. So still the Lexus is glued to the Mercedes in front of him. He has made the entire second, the entire uh, initial stage of the first sector glued to him like he was towed. And oh, he's made the move on the outside. Not really. I think he made a, just a bit, a bit of a... Uh, of a... Um, uh, uh, I don't remember who did it. Uh, no, I, he, he didn't even make the move. Like misjudgment. Uh, almost he, came a no. cropper. Oh, it, number 12? Uh, no, what is? Ah, Casper is off track. In the... 
almighty left uh, left hander who made a lot of your teams today. <laughs> right, okay. So he's off. We're going to stay on board but, with his power up at the front up. Yeah. Mix one last yeah, yeah, yeah. cool finished. Well up to order as well on the podium. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, is he going for a bit inside? Oh, mixed the side. Oh, the Mercedes is out uh, into the grass, but in keeping the position somehow. And trying to defend as much uh, as he can. Towards the right hander, while traffic is getting into the pits. And I think Mix is really starting to get nervous behind him. Yeah, he's certainly been back there a while. Oh, both men. Both drivers catch themselves a lot of dust on those outside tyres. And now become the inside tyres through Clark Curve past that pit entrance. Seventh position up for grabs. And that's 15th, that's Rogue just ahead of them. Oh, coming into turn one, the Lexus looking for a cutback perhaps. Oh, that's a lot of grass to be taken. Trying to get the tighter line, has a look out. Tries to force the defensive move from the Mercedes, the Mercedes. Says no thank you very much. Cool cracks onwards. The Lexus still looking downward at the moment, trying to get past here into Surtees. Surely not down Pilgrim's drop. More than likely on board the helmet car. Then, much of an exit advantage can Mix get over the Mercedes? Come down Pilgrim's drop into the first of these hellish right-handers and it's going to be as you were through this complex of corners no place to get an overtake done here unless a monster mistakes made and cool ain't about making those kind of mistakes four minutes left on the clock this battle still tantalizingly close uh, we've got bruno udb milden and tropic has taken his pit and as my co-commentator extraordinaire pointed out, we just come back out around about the fifth position. Not too bad. Mix on cool, still going on. Carado on Iggy is still going on. And Floppy Fox's charge, 40 laps in, is still going on. Very much so. He still needs to come and take that pit. And that is, in fact, a battle between Mix and Cool just ahead of them. So probably wouldn't have been a bad thing to come into the pits as we see these two coming around the last corner. The Ferrari still trying to get past the Honda. Mix still trying to get past SOP Cool. Now got the race leader hunting them down as well. What Ooh, a time to be alive. Oh, there we go. Absolute the Mercedes is a bit of a mistake getting uh, out of the left-hander, losing some some speed, not enough to get overtaken, but enough to get mixed close by once more into the first sector of the race, of the track. And I think it will still be a tow. Oh, the Drift King, I guess, because it was not expected by anyone in this earth. No bro, stuff there. How on earth did he hold on to that? I curled my toes, cleansed my f everything, crossed my fingers. That was incredible. Uh, those tyre marks be saved for posterity. Two minutes left to go. We've got a couple of... Oh, stop doing that. And he's finally come into the pits then. It is Floppy Fox, a race leader. And he's got a decent little gap over Bruno. How much will that be when he comes back out? UDB is still in third. Mild in fourth. Tropic in fifth. Eddie sixth. Cool seventh. Mix in eighth. That could well change. Car Mentalist and Frome rounding out the top ten. Floppy Fox about to round turn one. Bruno hiding shyly in the trees, but I can assure you he is on the last corner so we'll get a very quick update as to how far ahead floppy oh the message is out on the grass again and the lexus getting into the inside not yes in very, instead it is in the lexus getting into the inside of the mercedes on the right hander and he made the position well done for mix wow 
Mick 64 then finally getting it done just as we were watching the race leaders. The Lexus makes his way through. Mix 64 up into 7th. Cool down into 8th. Corrado is still trying to find his way past Eggy and Rogue. And Blue Mosquito are absolutely going at this one as well. Looking to improve on their positions. Cool and Mix are going to be close for the remainder of the race as well. Let's see if I can get a quick look. Up there. Hey, Jigsaw, how we doing, bud? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Been a cracking race, mate. Go back and watch the start and make sure you watch the whole thing. It was awesome. And we've still got overtaken to go. 20 seconds left. Oh, and I tell you, the Ferrari knows he's not got long left to make a move and he's trying to get his way still past Iggy last week's bottom split winner. But Floppy Fox is now in on his final lap and what a parade lap this one is going to be he has done the clean sweep and done what no one else has been able to do this season and that is take pole position and a race win not bad for his first race win of the season not bad for his first pole position of the season might as well get them both at the same time why the heck not all the congratulations going coming the way of the Ferrari driver very, very soon. Bruno and the Lexus. Mate started in fifth, made up to second. And looking like he's staying there. UDB in third. One of the men losing a position. ERT Milden, though, closing in as well for fourth. Close to a podium finish, to say the least. Tropic Rot started in third, finds himself down in fifth. But still a great drive nonetheless. Mix and SOP cool. Looks like they're sorted out their affairs. Uh, seven oh, Grad is out of track into the sand in the left hander, in the right hander, uh, and saved his car, but lost, uh, I think, two seconds from Iggy. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was only 0.4 of a second gap there. It's a lot bigger now. And the leader's ah, okay, the leader, there we go. We just missed him crossing the finish line. Sorry, Fox, but you did win. Congratulations, mate. Unbelievable drive in that Ferrari. Stay off the racing line. I hope they got checkered flags. Yes, they did. Thank goodness for that, Floppy Fox. Takes the win. Bruno finds himself on the podium once again. Second place, UDB. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The happiest man in the competition, UDB, gets himself a race podium. Congratulations to UDE, our team Milden, not far behind in fourth. We've got in fifth, we've got Eddie in sixth position. Mix in seventh, SOP Cool is going to come home to take eighth. Returning champion. That is Car Mentalist. He's going to come home in ninth position. The furthest down the order we've seen him finish in the two se the season and a half that we've been running so far. Uh, Flying Throb in tenth. Leon Seeley in eleventh. Again Carrado twelfth and thirteenth. Cablo got fourteenth. Blue Mosquito took the checker flag for fifteenth position. APX Rogue got himself sixteenth. Casper seventeenth. Jason. Finished in 18th and Art Connor and you have an egg giggle, mate. Both retired to the pits. About a third of the way into the race, but happiest of happy, happy days, it is a Ferrari win. I mean, Floppy Fox finding himself at the top of the tree. Absolutely phenomenal drive there from him, Christian. 22 seconds. And uh, 24 seconds in oh, no. the span of 60 minutes, uh, and I don't uh, really think he pushed it 100% because he was trying to get the car uh, in into the finish line in one piece. So he was just uh, brutally faster than anyone else, and <laughs> uh, he lapped half the grid. In fact, I think he. He lapped until 11th place, and it's, he, he just annihilated everyone today. Honestly, he just made the, a hell of a race, and no mistake, no problems, pole position, victory, probably even the fastest lap, 
without any doubt because no. I, I don't think anyone was half a second faster than the Volgrid. So yeah, I think he made a good race. I think he did. I think he did. I hope the guys at ERT, uh, sorry, one hub, sorry, got themselves the. Uh, I keep saying ERT because Dex Dex has got me in the jets. Uh, but one hub, sorry, my place. I try to save the highlights there to show the highlights at the end of the race. My PlayStation's blue screen. <laughs> hmm. So I hope somebody grabbed the results. I know some of the drivers watched, so if somebody could grab the results, sorry, sorry, sorry. I know someone grabs them I did from the stream. Did you grab them as well, Christian? You're an absolute yep. lifesaver, my friend. Thank you very much. Try to be clever there, so to show the highlights during the driver interviews, because we're only going to have two quick ones, because Bruno, uh, I know, isn't comfortable uh, speaking English. Uh, Portuguese, I believe, yes. Um, so I know, with him being on the podium, uh, we're going to be one... Uh, driver light in the comms box, but uh, uh, yeah, let's hope so you get that. That's what I get for uh, trying to be clever and get the highlights up. Pa Ciao! Uh, awesome backfire. Also, I tell you, he's already in the comedy box. Let's get him straight in. I bet he's absolutely buzzing, and I bet he's on the phone. And it is a first win, a pole position, and an absolute spanker of a race. It has to be said from start to finish in the goal line, Evo's. Very own floppy fox in the Ferrari. Fantastic result, my friend. Thank you very much. Yeah, I enjoyed that one. <laughs> enjoyed that one. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, enjoyed that one. Yeah, just went out for, for a cruise in the Rari. I uh, took, <laughs> took myself pole position. Fastest lap of the race. Won the race comfortably around a very, very tricky course that's, fa that's uh, famous for death. Uh, fabulous stuff. Uh, which, uh, well, let's get uh, let's stick in there. How did you feel when you took pole position? Yeah, really good. I mean, um, um, I kind of messed up my, my last qualifying lap, so I think I had a bit more in me, to be honest. But uh, no, I was chuffed. Uh, Yuri was keeping me honest. And um, yeah, Bruno as well. Um, yeah, there were some quick times there. So no, I was chuffed with that. I, I knew I had good race pace. So I wasn't sure my qualifying pace. Um, so yeah, to come off with pole is, yeah, it was amazing. It was really good. Yes, indeed, and that really sets you up nicely if, uh, going towards uh, the end of the season. Chromadex, anything you'd like to ask of a race winner and pole position setter, Floppy Fox? Uh, you said your last qualifying lap was not perfect. Yeah, right. I get it. I, I binned it um, about halfway through, so yeah, I, I had 22 deltas. I, I could have got into 22s, but um, yeah, it didn't go, didn't go well. <laughs> you are an horrible person. <laughs> you pick Chromadex right in his place there. Uh, you made the full position without any problem, and you still say that you could have been into the 22. That's just. You just. You guys just mastered the entire combo of track and car, I guess. Because honestly, that was a fantastic race from you. And. Well. <laughs> just congratulations. I really don't. Uh, it, it was. I rested with you, and honestly, I think it was one of your best races so far, honestly speaking, because that pace just come from nowhere, considering the last races you made. Uh, did you understood better something, or just the combo that was so suited for you? I think it's something about the layout of Brand Hatch. I don't know. I, I just really like the track. Um, I don't know why I can't put it onto other tracks. <laughs> but yeah, I... I I really like it there, and um, I, yeah, I knew fairly early on that you know this was going to be a good good race for me. Um, so now I'm, I'm yeah chuffed with the win, and uh, yeah, some good points, and uh, yeah, happy with that. Yeah. Um, final question from me, um, because I've got we've got the the other group winner as well, of course. So plenty yep. of driver interviews still to come. Um, but out with the two stints, I mean, it did seem like a pretty standard day at the office. Was there one of the two stints? Well, I mean, when I say stints. Like, you, you didn't put right to the end, but the first half hour of the race compared to the second half hour of the race, making your way through traffic, was there any scary mm. moments through there, or was it just as good oh, yeah. as a whistle? And... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was uh, quite a few off moments, not by me, um, <laughs> yeah. by people in front of me. And, um, yeah, the, things happen. Um you know, it is what it is. But yeah, there were a couple of moments where, you know, I don't know if there was a bit of panic. They went off, uh, came on at a time when I was getting there and uh, 
yeah, there was a, there was a couple of dodgy moments. Um, but yeah, the first half of the race was was cruising. Uh, was was really good. Got in a really good rhythm. Um, but yeah, there was there was I think a few, a three um, back markers that um, it could have gone the other way, but thankfully it went really well for me. Uh, got through, and um, yeah, I was just um, I just kept thinking if I go quicker, perhaps time will go quicker. And then the race will finish. Yeah. And then I could run to the toilet. I was dying. I forgot to go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nothing better before a one-hour race to motivate you uh, to get those oh, laps yeah. and get to the end. <laughs> yeah, but it, it might have took me a... Uh, took my mind off racing I, I don't know just uh, yeah. I think I might do that for now I'll just balance on my chair and eat in the toilet and, uh... yeah not worrying about the flow it got you into the flow fantastic <laughs> and there we go a little, a little note but uh, listen Fox absolutely massive congratulations once again hugely deserved one and a really phenomenal drive in that Thank Ferrari you. and congratulations on your nomination for driver of the day from me uh, we'll get to oh. that at the end. But yeah, there you go. Cheeky little uh, heads up, mate. You have been nominated for Driver of the Day. And it's uh, myself that's given you. And I'll have a question for you uh, later on. So double congratulations, my good man. And we will you uh, see you again next week for Silverstone. Silverstone is, yeah. Thank you. Excellent. There we go then, ladies and gentlemen. Race winner, pole position. And uh, in the Ferrari, love to see it, Floppy Fox. Joining us next, uh, we have the man who has won, or the driver who has won the bottom split. So congratulations, he's in the comedy box any second now. He'll uh, pop his microphone. Hey. hey, there he is, there he is, what a professional. He's just won himself, that's what he's just completely overcome with the victory in Group C, and I tell you, it makes that group, Group Z, sorry, let me pronounce that correctly, does make that group very, very interesting. Eddie, that was a win there for you. How was that drive for you, my friend? It's like really tough, like a bit, being the middle of this guy that really fast, you know, and I get really nervous. And uh, when I had the opportunity to pass, to overtake Corrado at the beginning of the race, like I, I took it and I tried to do my best to do, don't do any mistake. And, um, well, I'm happy to win first time in this group. Yeah, and not only win, I know I usually hand to Chromadex, I'm sure he's got a question, but I'm going to jump in uh, straight away with question number two for you. Um, yeah, I mean, you finished sixth overall. How, I mean, <laughs> yeah. realisti realistically, uh, is that how far beyond your expectation for an overall finish uh, is well, that, like or did you expect to be getting top tens? No, 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 it's way above what, what, what I was expecting, like, uh, the guys are really fast. The only thing I, I knew about this track, it's like, it's easy to do a mistake. And uh, I think it, it what happened. So I start gaining position, I start in nine, I think. And uh, I got two or three overtakes, and then I just kept my race, trying to don't do a mistake. I still, I still have done a few, uh, but wasn't like not enough to someone just overtake me. So uh, it was way above my expectation for sure. Superb, superb. Love to see it. Love to see it. Uh, Chromadex, any questions for the man that's just won his split and finished sixth overall? Do we still have Chromadex? Oops, I was muted. Sorry. <laughs> hey! Um... Excellent. There we go. That's uh, five pounds in the um... spare jar. I'm looking on you go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> from from the start, uh, I said um, first. West, I have two questions in mind. The first one uh, is why do you sound like Toto Wolf, and the second <laughs> one is <laughs> the second one. No, for real, like <laughs> <laughs> when you jumped in, I when you jumped in. I was a bit confused. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's me. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I don't know. He's. I think he's Austrian. I'm Brazilian. I don't know why our accents are similar, but wow. <laughs> there you go. Ah, uh, yes, the Austrian Brazilian. <laughs> oh yeah. I, often well, confused. You, I'm often confused. <laughs> I don't know. You you are saying that like uh, I don't know. <laughs> cool, eh? But yeah, but... now the serious question. Um. 
Uh, I didn't notice that at the first stint of the race, uh, you were trying to managing and defending the position. Uh, and you, uh, talk, uh, you talked about a few issues. Uh, did you do it uh, on purpose to slow me down a bit, or it was just, uh, uh, I don't remember who it was, I think it was a flying from, I'm not sure, but you were batting with someone in the start. Was it for Co Cojado, Cojado. Ah, yeah, Cojado. The, the white fair, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. And was no. it because you were saving or just because he was just enough fast uh, to button with you? Yeah, it's it's funny, like Rom, uh, fly with Rom, like, I was talking to him before the race, he's my teammate, and uh, I was concerned about like the tires. I'm not so fast, I knew like the practice I was doing under 25, but I saw the pace in front at the beginning was 26, 25, and I was comfortable with that. So uh, once I overtook him and saw people like going uh, farther from my, the gap between me and the, the guys behind start like increasing, I, I start to, to, to be more careful instead of like going, going fast because I knew that would be really hard to get the guys in front of me. They are way faster than me. So there were no point to try to push to the limit, you know. So my goal was to, to don't do any mistakes and I, I'm happy that I didn't. Okay. Excellent. And uh, one last quick question for me. That's two podiums now since the split. Um, we've got the three races left, Silverstone, Kailami and Imola. Uh, any expectation from yourself for uh, more trips to the podium? Uh, I really like Imola and uh, I will do my best to, to win this group. So it's my second podium indeed. But I know there are some guys really, really good in my group. I think, uh, what's his name? Uh, the one who won the last race, Iggy, Iggy. Rog. Yeah, Iggy, Iggy and, and Rog, and they are, oh, okay. they are they are fast. Yeah, yeah. so I'm glad. That I I don't know which position they finished, um, but I hope they're not so close to me. And uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <fair enough. laughs> yeah fair uh, Rogue finished down in 16th overall, so you're definitely a few places ahead of him. And Iggy finished 12th overall. Okay, well, so yeah, definitely not that... a few places ahead. So yeah, you've definitely gained a few places there. So yeah, loving that. I'm asking you about podiums, and you're talking about winning a championship. That, my friend, is yeah. what I love to hear the competitive spirit. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, Eddie, Good. thank you very much thank for you jumping guys. in. Congratulations on the thank second you. trip to the podium, which was, of course, the top spot. And we indeed hope to see you in here once again. Best of luck for the rest of the season, mate. I hope so. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. No Cheers. Okay, there we go then. That was Eddie, winner of his split. Both splits up for the, the £25 Amazon or PlayStation voucher, of course. Up for grab. Driver of the day. I've already given mine away. It is Floppy Fox. And my question for him is, was the full length uh, opening stint part of the plan or was that something that you thought of during the race did you run to the end did you not pick to the end was that your original strategy or was that motivated by uh, whatever goes on during the race and chromadex who have you picked out for your driver of the day this week megan man um actually i i think i will go uh for um, again for mix but the same for a different reason uh what changed between qualifying and race? Uh, because in qualifying, it was basically nowhere. It was in the mid-pack, uh, nothing too extraordinary. And then in the race, you remember how to drive, I guess, and started com committing homicide into uh, uh, other driver's times uh, and gained uh, even up to uh, one second to his opponents. So I'm, I'm really curious, uh, what uh, did he change? Uh, between qualifying a race. We'll go then. I'm on mute this time. Get me putting money in the spare tire this time. That's it. Chroma and I'm just balancing it out so he doesn't feel bad. That's what it was. Uh, but so there you go then. So uh, Floppy Fox, was your uh, pit strategy governed by the race or was it pre-planned? And Mix 64, uh, what happened between qualifying and the race? Where did all the extra pace come from 
So we will get the answers to that and many more questions next week as well. Uh, speaking of next week, it is going to be another trip to British shores. Silverstone, it was already mentioned in the previous interviews. And uh, this track slightly favoured to Brands Hatch by some slightly not so much favoured to Brands Hatch by others. We will see. Such a bit of that one and we plays out we'll bring um, we will bring you a full round up of the points the comeback points and all those good things next week when we do that as well um, but for this evening uh, thank you of course to everyone that tuned in joined in uh, thank you to everyone as well I have to say this thank you to everyone from the Chad Rice community and from the DJ Moazis community um, the amount of followers that you guys have chucked on in the past three days is uh, quite astounding. So thank you very much for getting on board with all the commentary work that I got on board with. And I know it's all to do with things like the Mental Health Foundation and Mind UK, who are, of course, sponsors of this fine One Hub establishment. Um, but, as I say, that is all we've got time for this evening. Uh, those were your race results. Uh, thank you again, everyone in the chat, everyone getting involved. And, of course, huge thank you to someone that is clearly, fast, if not already, fast becoming uh, the greatest co-commentator in ACC history and about to become an F1 engineer as well. So thank you very uh, wait, much. Wait, some time. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some moments. <laughs> you love my introductions. But, yeah, Chromedex, amazing stuff from you once again. And I can't wait till next week, mate. Thank you. Thank you to you to letting me be part of the race once again. Yeah, phenomenal stuff, phenomenal stuff. So thank you there from Chromadex. Uh, thank you again to OneHub for getting us on board. Thank you to the Mental Health Foundation for sponsoring. It's good to talk. Get yourself some help if you feel you need to. It can be a lot easier, believe it or not, talking to someone you don't know. The first step can always seem the most daunting, but it can be the most rewarding. So please, if you do find yourself struggling with anything at all, reach out to organisations such as the Mental Health Foundation. They are there specifically to get you back on your feet whatever way you need. Uh, Next Level Racing, ERT, Vespertine and 3M sponsors and partners as well. My name's John Wright, Double O Raven, and that is all we've got time for this week. But we will be back next week with Silverstone. We will see you then. Take it easy, stay safe, and a very good night. <laughs>